Hello everybody, Bubbles S here and welcome back to Hearts of Iron 4. In today's video we're going to be doing a guide to the achievement, it's going to be lit. So let's begin shall we? First things first, research slots. We're going to start off by grabbing civilian trains, basic torpedoes because we're going to be working our way to the 36 sub hole, and from here it's standard electronics, industry and so on. For our sieves we're going to be building more mills, for our actual mills we're just going to be spamming guns, for the army we're going to be grabbing it all up and deleting it, the same with the Air Force, and that is pretty much all of our prep out the way. So for focus, we're going to be doing Restore the Workers Republic, go up to speed 5, and begin. Something we're going to do now is grab military access and a non-aggressive pact in the Soviet Union. It's very good for extra relations. Now that the Workers Republic has been restored, we're going to enter opposition. Seeking the support of the Soviets will make us a puppet, which is not really worth it for an achievement run like this. 100 political power and 20 command power, we're going to hire ourselves the infantry expert. XP is going to be very useful today, so let's get that out of the way first. Now we've entered opposition, we're going to unite the opposition. Oh, and I nearly almost forgot. After civilian trains are done, we're going to grab ourselves transport ships. And now it's time for civil war. The fires of the revolution are burning. The first things first, we're going to get ourselves a revolutionary cabinet. And since neither of us have any units, we're going to have to train up some. This is probably our cheapest template, so one of them will do. As soon as it's ready, we'll deploy it and run down the victory points. And there it is. We need to give it one day so it has Olg. There we go. And now let's go. And that's that. And immediately the Soviet Union is guaranteeing our independence, despite the fact we're in opposition to them. Nice. Nice. It's just easier to delete the army in situations like this. Yeah, right now we're going to be spamming out our artillery division. It's not the best, but it'll probably do for now. How many of those can we afford? Not many. So let's start off with something like 11. The equipment deficit we can deal with. So first things first, let's build some artillery. We'll spam these out as soon as we can. Immediately after the revolutionary cabaret is formed, we're going to hire one of them. The revolutionary poet, basically our silent workhorse. Next up, the Lithuania Belarus SSR. And now begins another state expansion game, this time in Belarus. So for us, we want to control as many states as we can. We're going to start off in Minsk, and any others we get are just bonuses. We need at least two states, I believe, to get control of a state. The Soviets are inconsistent with what states they choose. They might choose some in the south, some in the north, and obviously it depends on how much political power they have, so it will probably vary from game to game. Anyway, for us, we're going to go down to crushing the Forest Brothers. Every once in a while, they'll do like a raid on us, and these events can be kind of annoying, especially if they siphon equipment. Let's see, we have control of Minsk now. Now, just time for the other states. Yeah, this cost us a lot of political power, but it's a great way to ensure our victory. We now have 35 XP, so we're going to go over to Army Command, Spirit of the Army, and Ideological Loyalty. Literally gives us unlimited manpower, so very useful. These are kind of like the international brigades in the Spanish Civil War, which is funny because we do have a national spirit called that. Oh, that's unfortunate. We have basically no recruitable population factor now. Minus 25, minus 15, minus 50. Yeah, we have 10% factor now. Well, at least we've crushed the Forest Brothers. Now we're going to do Lithuanian Red Riflemen. Three units, always nice. But just like the Spanish Civil War, we should at least be one day ahead, so I guess that works out. Anyway, Belarusian Civil War. If you want to know which side is your side, just look for the side with Pomomenko, which is this. Right, we're going to send four of these riflemen to help. That's the max we can afford. For us, we're going to try and get rid of agrarian society's debuffs. So, redrawn the railways, modernise industry, natural resources. And let's just help them finish up quickly. Shouldn't take too long. That should do it. Yep, and we immediately annex Belarus. Well, that wasn't the best. That worked out alright. And the best benefit of this is, we get all the units from Belarus' Civil War. So 10 units for free. Can't complain about that. Next, we're going to go for the artillery expert. This is actually useful nowadays, since it got changed in NSB. You'd think the Soviets would have declared war on us since we stole Belarus off them, but... Nope. They don't even have cause in it anymore. And with 20 XP, we're going to go for inventive leadership. Just so for all the new generals we have to get, might have some nice traits. See a trickster. 
Oh, and a brilliant strategist commando. I should have waited and made this guy our field marshal. Oh well, it doesn't really matter. This field marshal must be very confused. The majority of his generals are twins. Now that we've sorted out agrarian society, it's time for us to end the bourgeoisie dictatorships in Latvia and Estonia. We have the benefit of this little sliver of Belarus that is attached to Latvia, so they have to defend it. We've just 18 days to go until we start. We're going to improve relations with Germany and Italy, so as soon as we start, we can get Lendlease from them. Lendlease is always useful. Before we start, we're going to do invest in Baltic trade. And now let's start. First, Latvia. And the Soviets want us to join the Comintern. I don't think I can say no to that. So despite us being in opposition, we're in. That affords us a lot of extra protection and forces the AI to garrison it. Don't forget Lend-Lease. Make sure you have a massive deficit and just go over to Germany and Italy and they'll help you. There we go, around 12,000 for free. Not going to complain about that. We just need to encircle the Latvians. It shouldn't take us too long. And there's the end of Latvia. Obviously just going to annex them. And now we have a big problem. Estonia is guaranteed by Britain. Now, in my practice games, what I did is I declared war on Latvia, and just before it, Latvia fell, I would declare war on Estonia. The problem is, in this game, Estonia got guaranteed immediately. So maybe I should have declared war on them both immediately, I don't know. But this is quite annoying. But they think this guarantee is going to save them? Nah, let's have some fun, see if we can't take them down as well. So, let's get on the Estonian border and prepare. Anyway, extensive conscription. Right, now let's start basically World War II in this universe over Estonia. Thanks, allies. And there's the end of Estonia. Luckily, we can immediately unite the Baltics. So we call them. And now we're just going to have to build up and prepare for the inevitable against the allies. It's going to have to be at least a little while. We're going to have to wait until Germany goes after them, probably. But that's okay. So we're just going to have to start building subs so we can eventually get supremacy over the allies. Unfortunately, we don't have any XP, so for now we're just going to have to buy a license for a sub from the Soviets. This is the cheapest they have, and we'll just build one of those. Just enough for us to get some XP so we can build our own. And right now, we're just going to spam dockyards. It's always hard to get supremacy over the allies, so we're just going to need as much as we can get. Right, this is our standard infantry template. We're going to try and get two armies of that. From experience, I know that that should just be enough to take down the Allies. We're going to be going down to carry the revolution west. It's a very nice national spirit. Thanks to Nenlis, we can mostly just spam artillery right now. The Axis will provide us pretty much everything we need. I really, really hope Czechoslovakia refuses to detonate. Anyway, here's the Allies' first naval invasion. That's actually kind of useful so we can just push them back into the sea. This can limit the amount of units the Allies will have. So this will be a long-term goal for us. Destroy as many naval invasions on us as they do for us. We can always call in the Soviet Union if we get a bit overwhelmed. Well, that is a lot of Allied units. We just need to take Memo and they'll be so encircled. Come on, we're almost there. Yes, it's broken. Can we get it? Damn, that is a big encirclement for the Allies. So, here are their losses before. And here's after. There was a, like 130,000 divisions in that pocket. Well, I think it's in our best interest to let the Allies do that again. Oh, what do you know? Where are they doing it this time? Okay, in Tallinn. Get up there, let's go. Don't know why we have to do a United Baltic SSR when we already are. This should probably have a bypass. Nope, the Sudeten crisis didn't go to war, unfortunately. Anyway, good. Another naval invasion dealt with. And we got our first sub. But this guy's just going to be exercising it for a little while. Another naval invasion, and it looks like to be Australians. When will they learn? That's not even a port tile. Well, at least for once, Australia will be in this peace deal. Our fallback line will not be on the coast. We want them to land. Right, we have 8 XP, let's make our sub hull. Sub engine 1, and torpedo choose 1. We want this to be cheap. There we go, only 30 more than the AG class. And as soon as this one is done, we'll start building it. Don't forget to cancel license production once it's done. No need to pay that anymore. UK's losses now? 
nearly 200,000 just to us. Nice. I'd really like to go up to service by requirement, but I do not have the war support for it. Yeah, we're in no position to refuse Germany right now, so there goes Memel. Now, let's do free the workers of Poland. This might be interesting. We might be able to get some more cores. Well, there is only one doctor for us, isn't there? The purifier power. So, what do the Soviets say to that? Well, I immediately declared war on Poland. Yeah, I'm not strong enough to beat Poland, so... I'm gonna have to do the inevitable. The Soviets should be able to manage it. In time. And hey, this might result in more allied units being destroyed. Probably. What on earth? There has been no armed conflict for several years, but Poland wants us to make peace. <laughs> I think not. Not the least because Germany will probably eventually go after them, and I don't want to run the risk of going to war with Germany early. Well, the Molotov Rion Chop Pact is about to be signed, so Germany is on its way. No real point in wasting manpower now. Can I now afford 21 divisions? Yes. Well, let's get those underway. Well, no surprise to say it's influencing us. Good, Germany's now around. And we have actually managed to circle all of these units. Well, down goes Poland. Don't know how this will be partitioned, considering the Molotov Ribbentrop Pact is active. But finally, we push those out. Right, let's send back all but the tank from the Soviets. We now have our units here. This has been waited for long enough. Let's prepare to name and invade the United Kingdom. We'll send our subs to Wilhelmshaven. And of course, it's going to be the classic UK invasion. Two divisions of naval invasion with five around Newcastle and Hull. Should do. As usual, the question is, when will we get supremacy? Navy on strike force. And what do we get? Unsurprisingly green. It's probably going to be a while until we get it. At least until the fall of France. Good. Germany's declared on Denmark and we're going to help them with that. We're going to help Germany take Denmark. So hopefully maybe the UK's fleet gets trapped in the Baltic Sea. Because they already have some ships there. And our naval invasion has left. Good. Right. You've got to really pay attention now. This guy is sick. Might have to unassign him in case we need to use force attack. I'll focus now. Just do whatever you think is good. I'm going to do technology sharing for the fifth research slot. Right, I'm going to have to unassign this guy temporarily. Let's use the invader. Oh, it doesn't make a difference. I forgot. Okay, hollers and circle. That's good. Really? We would have broken it with a force attack. Oh, wait a minute. There we go. Now I figured it out. Should have figured that out a lot sooner. And there we go. We are in. Which is always more than enough. Let's get the sick guy back in. And let's get to work. Classic strategy here. We're going to be encircling the UK. And good. We did secure Newcastle. So the UK is very weak. And we're in it. As the Baltics. Funnily enough, we're not even considered a major yet. And France falls. So we have managed to do all of this before Vichy. That's actually quite good. But this is going to be bloody, my expectation is. Oh, well, we might still be able to encircle London. One tile away. We could do it. And come on, come on. We've done it. Let's try not to lose it now. Right, these Polish exiles are going to be hard to break, but once we do, well, that's going to be great. And there they go. Now, just time to mop up the UK. I think I did, yeah, there are some Soviet units here, so we are in a bit of peril, but I don't know. I think we might be okay. This is a weirdly balanced peace deal right now. Look at this. 29%, 26, 31, 12. We're actually considered a major now. This isn't funny. We really need some trains right now, so 10 factories on them. Okay, another UK naval invasion. Hmm. I guess we'll finish up here. We don't need the conference, but we're close enough. 
And there we go. Because of the nonsense in all of this, you know it's funny. We could take Warsaw in this peace deal. Can we try that? Yeah, sure. It's going to cost us all of our points, though. Now, we're going to have to go to war with Germany one way or another, so I'm not going to. So let's finally take Estonia, considering that's what this war has actually started over. And we'll take any of our cores, like Vilnius and anything in Belarus. And of course, we're going to try and get as many puppets and the like as we can. Anything that can help us extend our line will be very useful. So Britain, France, maybe the Benny Lux if we can afford it. And yes, this time Australia is in the peace deal, and I will take them as my puppet. <laughs> considering what happened last time we tried to get Australia. And that should conclude this very, very messy peace deal. I can only imagine Molotov Ribbentrop will make this worse. I took 67 states, Italy got one, this little state I gave to them. Germany took 65, Soviets took two, Poland still exists because I forgot about them, and then there's Border Gorg Galore. Oh no, actually, Poland's a Soviet puppet, so this is going to be even more interesting. Right, next we need to get control of Berlin and Warsaw, so how are we going to do that? Well, something like this will probably do. Yep, we're doing it again. Right now I'm actually going to focus on Palermo, one of Italy's biggest victory points. Right, we've encircled Palermo so we can tell these nine units to leave, and yep, as I hoped, the Italian unit is leaving, so we should get Palermo for free. And there, they did it. And down goes Italy. Now we just need to focus on Germany. We should just be about to take Berlin, so as soon as we do, we should be okay. And Berlin has fallen. That should do it. Nice. Right, depending on how good your Order 66 will do, you may or may not have gotten the achievement while at war. But if you haven't, just make sure you take Berlin and Warsaw in the peace deal. But for us, well, we'll just take what looks good. Especially our cause, these two states. Imagine being Romania, seeing Hungary be capitulated just days after you give away North Transylvania. We probably could have called in the Soviet Union to get rid of this little border gore. But, whatever. The same thing for giving Poland back its stuff. We could, but we also hold Polish cores, so that would remove some of our cores too, so... Looks like we're just gonna have border gore. There we go, we took 60 states, and we got a whole load of puppets. Right, let's clean up some of this border gore. First thing, let's give back Jutland to Denmark. And we'll give most of France back. The Soviets puppeted France in the previous War of the Allies, so unfortunately we don't get them as a puppet, but oh well, at least we have France on our side. And funnily enough, doing this now means that France will annex Vichy, right about now. There we go. A united France, somewhat. Annoyingly though, they are locked out of the focus tree as they didn't do appeal to the French nation in time. Oh well. Alright, I should probably explain how I pulled off this Order 66. So I had 360 divisions in Germany to guard their victory points, lost quite a lot of them, and I had 155 divisions in Italy to do the same. For our main actual infantry divisions, they were used to guard Italian victory points, big ones that sometimes need a bit of extra firepower to break. Ones like Genoa, Naples, Trieste, so on. And as you can see, it clearly worked out. This is the first time in a long time doing a dual axis Order 66 that I've actually had Italy fall first. Berlin was quite funny because it was actually only defended by Hungarians. Usually Berlin is free, but... Oh well, we got there in the end, so I'm not one to complain. You would have two options on how you would want to go about this achievement if you're following this guide up to the War of the Allies. You could have done what I did, the Order 66, or you could have gone after Germany fairly. Now, I'm not the biggest fan of fighting Germany fairly, it just takes so long. Now, yes, I probably could have done it, but... Eh, yeah, this saved me a lot of time, it's only 1940 after all. But yeah, we'll be calling this here. We probably could continue this on to the other Baltic achievement, it has my name in it, but I think that's for another time. Maybe another run where we don't use Order 66. I know some of you are fans of it, but some aren't, so there'll be a good middle ground of guys that do have it and some that don't. So, until next time everybody, this has been me, Bubble Zest, doing that this is going to be lit as Lithuania turned Lithuania Belarus turned the Baltic Socialist Republic. I thank you for watching, I do hope you've enjoyed it, feel free to leave any suggestions in the comments below, I'm always looking for new video ideas. But, 
until we meet again, everybody. Good bye. You know, in Vilnius, there actually is a restaurant themed after London. That was a real mind freak when I ended up going there. <laughs>